deciphering only vague traces of geography and infrastructure. Through the clouds, Hill blinks slowly. Turning, he looks towards the pilots, two calm men silently staring ahead, occasionally pressing buttons on the dashboard. Hill touches his iPhone, opening and closing a free backgammon app, opening then closing a free solitaire app, opening then closing a free drafts app. Hill touches his iPhone and puts ambient sounds, rain in a barrel, on repeat. Thank you, rain. Thank you, barrel, Hill thinks. Hill looks towards a South American couple sitting opposite him. The woman, her loose, dark brown hair streaked with silver, is pointing a GoPro at the window, recording. The man, wearing a faded college sweater, black jeans and scuffed, multicoloured nikes, places his hands around the woman's neck, the woman playing along and flopping her tongue out, conveying, Dead, you got me, as she holds the GoPro in position, still recording, still documenting. Hill looks away, touches his iPhone and puts Sine Wave 2000 by Abelard on repeat. Hill looks back towards the couple, now pointing at the folksy illustrations of Celtic burial mounds and aspirational sea salt branding that cover one side of an expanded tourist pamphlet. Guide to Anglesey, Arweiniad i Anismon, Hill thinks. Hill listens as they repeat, Bear Grills, Island Rib Ride, back to each other over and over, grinning. Hill turns up the volume on his iPhone, looks straight ahead and closes his eyes. The aeroplane cabin rattles violently for a moment, and then continuously for a sustained period. Hill opens his eyes and watches the South Americans laughing as they struggle to pour water from a bottle of Breckenkarreg into a silver hip flask without it spilling on the grubby metal floor. Happy maniacs, Hill thinks. Hill looks around the cabin. Two middle-aged women wearing charcoal business suits are talking and looking at a tablet. Two middle-aged men wearing white shirts tucked into chino shorts are talking and looking at a tablet. A woman in her twenties is gripping her armrest, her nails digging into the worn, faded material as she maintains a calm and stoic facial expression. Like Lucy, Hill thinks. Hill unmutes the volume on his iPhone and looks ahead. Hill becomes conscious of the aeroplane tilting, shuddering, then beginning to make its descent. Sine wave 2000 starts playing again. How many times, Hill thinks. Music to crash to, Hill thinks. Survival odds, Hill thinks. It's okay, Hill thinks. Hill looks ahead and shuts his eyes. Yeah, Who took my fucking cell phone, man? Martin, empty your pockets. What? I saw you in the bathroom, man. Somebody dialed my phone. Shut the fuck up. Unbelievable. It's unacceptable after all the coke I've wasted on you people. taxi driver pulls up at the side of the road. The driveway is half a kilometre long, but Roger only arranged to pay up to the gate and Hill has no money on him. Classic Roger, Hill thinks. Hill looks at the wrought iron gates, open and pressed back against the high stone wall, only partially visible amongst the overrunning ivy and nettle bushes. He turns around and looks in the direction of the taxi, the driver is adjusting his earpiece, speaking, laughing. Did I talk enough on the journey, Hill thinks. Didn't speak at all, Hill thinks. Hill feels regret for not having brought the suitcase with wheels. He doesn't know what is making the suitcase so heavy. 
all that you can remember packing is socks, pants, one pair of jeans and a couple of t-shirts. He made the conscious choice to leave his laptop at home. Hill told Ed he would be uncontactable for most of the time he was on the island and wasn't sure how long that would be. He explained that Roger was very ill, mentally unstable, pathetically insistent on him staying at the house. Hill stands at the wrought iron gate, suitcase in one hand and cat carrier in the other. The taxi pulls away into the distance and towards the A road that runs uninterrupted from one end of the island to the other. Is Dave awake? Hill thinks. Resting the suitcase on the ground, Hill holds the cat carrier in both hands and lifts it up to eye level. Peering through the metal grill, he looks at Dave, curled up and still feeling the sleeper. Drug cat, Hill thinks. Hill lowers the pet carrier to the floor and picks it up by the handle. He looks at the suitcase and sighs. The trees and woodland that surround the driveway look exactly the same as they did when Hill lived here. Towards the edges of the driveway, the grass is neatly kept, gradually becoming wilder until the denseness of the bushes and trees is only broken by a hacked pathway or old tree trunk. Hill listens to the wind and looks at the leaves on the large old trees. Objectively beautiful, Hill thinks. Did I ever appreciate this, Hill thinks. Hill picks up the suitcase and tries to work a comfortable way of slinging it over his shoulder. This is worse. Hill keeps trying until he feels the sharp edge of the small Yale lock scratch above his neckline. He throws the suitcase to the floor. Nope, Hill thinks. Nope, Hill thinks. Standing still for a moment, he closes his eyes and listens for the sound of waves. Beyond the driveway, beyond the house, beyond the front lawn, beyond the rocky path, but still there, still existing. Sailing lessons hell, Hill thinks. Ambient waves sleep up hell, Hill thinks. He picks the pet carrier up and begins walking down the driveway a slow, warm line of blood and sweat creeping down his back.